Apologize for the bad audio and video quality. I did this all on my laptop, so bear with me. You'll need some cardstock here I got from uh, Amazon. I'll put that link in the description. Mine is a hundred pounds cardstock. You can use whatever material you want to use. Then a pencil, a ruler or a straight edge, really a ruler because you'll be measuring. Then uh, regular craft scissors I've just got from Target or something. Then uh, this special craft glue, mine is scotch, I got from Michaels. Uh, there's many different kinds out there, but this one I got because it was specifically for paper gluing. I use that flat side there. Then you'll need a folding bone. This one is from Martha Stewart. I got also at Michaels for about five, six dollars. Very, very helpful for folding if you don't want to get ugly creases. Then you need a cutting machine thing. Uh, I forget what it's called. <laughs> you can use it for coupons. Basically cutting straight edges because I can't cut straight edges to save my life. Next you're going to use your pencil and your ruler and your paper here and you're going to measure out and make little tick marks where you're going to fold and cut. So we're going to measure on the long side first, the 11 inches side, and we're going to go 2.875 inches in and make a tick mark there. Now if you're like me, I need it to be a little simpler than 2.875, so what you have to do is go 2 inches in and then 14 more tick marks, or 2 tick marks below 3. If that makes any sense at all, that's how I have to remember it. So you're coming in from the edge, 2.875 inches, on both sides. As you can see, I'm doing here. And you're also going to do it to the other side of the paper. Exact same thing. 2.875 inches in from the edge on both edges. It doesn't matter. You can make the tick mark anywhere on the page. You're not going to see it when we fold and cut. So it, it's okay. It doesn't need to be perfectly in a perfect spot. <laughs> Now we're going to do the short edge, the eight and a half inches edge, and we are going to measure 0.625 inches from each edge. Once again, to make that easier, go in one half inch and two more tick marks up. On most rulers, the first inch has 32 tick marks, so then that would be four tick marks up instead of two. Now once you have that measurement, do the same thing measure on both sides the same amount 0.625 inches in and make your tick mark. Once again doesn't matter where because your folding and your cutting is not is going to hide that and you're not going to see it. Once you got all your tick marks this is what it should look like because you can see hopefully you can see all my little pencil marks there. I'm going to be lining up the tick marks together so we can score and fold and cut some edges. If it's easier for you at first, you can draw a whole line across so that you can see the edge you're going to be cutting or folding. So next you'll need your folding bone and ruler because we're going to score the uh, lines here so it'll be easier to fold. We are going to use this pointy part. That is kind of the sharper part of the folding bone so it'll be easier to score. Using my folding bone as a pivot point to place my ruler and line up with the other tick mark on the other side, I'm going to line it up and then press down using the straight edge as my guide to score the paper and I'm going to go over it two or three times to get a good little divot there. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little divot. That's where the score is and that's what's going to make it really easy for you to fold your paper and get a really nice edge. And we're going to do it again, flipping the paper clockwise, counterclockwise, no particular order, of course, uh, matching up our tick marks that we made and scoring from the edge, edge to edge. I have mine on a Lazy Susan, obviously optional, but it makes it easier for me to move my paper around without messing up my straight edge and my uh, matching up my tick marks. I just find that easier. It's a personal preference.
This is what it should look like after you've scored all four of your segments here from tick mark to tick mark. As you can see, the flaps there on the side are is going to be the top and bottom, and then the side are those small little flaps on the side, obviously. <laughs> Next, you take your craft scissors and we're going to cut the little bits right here on the bottom and on the top. I cut from the edge to the intersection point where the scored lines meet. Now I'm going to cut a little diagonal piece out right there to make it easier to fold. So it cuts out a little triangle there on both sides. I'm just doing this with my eyeball. I'm not measuring it just because it's such a short little cut and I'm going to be doing that on both sides exact same way. This is what it looks like so far with your cuts and your, and your score lines. Next thing, we're going to fold these little flaps we created here inward. And you can use your bone, once again, to, to help you do that. But since we already scored it, I don't really need to do it, but I'm going to show you typically how you would do it. You can use it as a, an assistance tool there and just fold it over. And then now we're going to use the bone to flatten it out and make a nice crease here, like this, using the flat side. And we're going to do the same exact thing to the other side. Once again, I had a crease, so I'm not going to use my bone to fold it. I'm just going to use it to flatten it. So now these are folded. And this is what it should look like right now. We are now going to cut off these little four bits here. Because that's going to be hanging over if we don't cut those off. This is where the straight edge cutting tool comes in handy. You can also use your scissors if you would like. You can also use your X-Acto knife and a straight edge. If you don't have one of these machines, there are many options on how to cut straight. Also, put, make sure to put your machine on a really sturdy surface. I, for some reason, did not, so um, that, could be, that could prove to be difficult. So put your paper in and make sure it lines up with the straight edge on your cutting machine if you're doing it with this. And basically we're just lining it up and trying to cut these little flaps off without cutting that folding folded part right there. So we don't want to cut that off. We want to keep that. So as carefully as you can, cut off these little bits here. Do the same exact thing to the other side, being very careful to cut it straight and without cutting your little foldy flap thing that we just made. And this is what it looks like now. Now we're going to fold the rest of our folds here. We just have these two left and just use your hands and fold them in. If you've scored it, you don't need the bone to help you. You just need it to help you flatten the edge and make it a nice little crease like we did on the other sides. Now it's time for the glue. First I'm going to discover, I'm going to find out what I want my bottom to be, fold it over as if I'm closing it, and then mark a little bit under the edge where I want my glue to stop, because I don't want to glue the whole edge, otherwise it'll probably look really crappy. So now I know where I can put my glue. I take my glue. Once again, I use the little cushiony flat edge part, because I don't want little lines. I just want it to be flat. So in my experience, um, I don't want to get the glue on my table because then it might get on my paper, so I do it on the edge. Another good reason for this Lazy Susan, or just a desk, put it on the edge and just start covering your little area that you want to glue with glue. And see my little pencil mark comes in handy, so I don't go past that. 
uh, then make sure you do the other side and you don't do opposite sides. Make sure that you check because I have done that before and I did opposite sides and I ruined the whole envelope. So always check. And once I'm done gluing, I'm going to close up the envelope to stick it on there. And since it's still wet, it's not going to stick all the way. As you can see, I've got some glue on it. That's what I'm talking about. Try to be as careful as possible. I'm going to use actually my bone to kind of get all of the areas, you know, pressed down into the glue. And then I'm going to get something heavy to flatten it. <laughs> um, literally, the only thing around me that was heavy enough was my... Samsung tablet. I have a cover on it. I am not ruining my tablet. Don't worry. I love that thing. But my cover is this cheapy thing I don't mind getting glue on. So I'm using that for now and I'm pressing it down. Once it's dry, uh, this is the finished product. Now there's a little bit of lip on the other side so you can cut that off or you can be a little more precise than I am and, you know, make sure that that doesn't happen. But for mo the most part, I'm not too picky. And for a cheap little simple quick DIY envelope, I am totally okay with this. That is my mock invitation. My 5x7 mock invitation fits right in there. It's for a sealing the envelope. You can use a sticker or glue or whatever you prefer. So that is how you make a simple little envelope. Nothing special, nothing fancy. Thanks for watching guys and I hope to see you in my next video.